Hi, welcome back to uh, Changing Your Life in Life and I'm sorry, Life and Money Matters with the Success Guys, Changing Lives One Day and One Dollar at a Time. We've got Renee Guerra in studio and Mike Hill. Renee Guerra is a uh, 20-year employee for Dr. Pepper and Snapple Corporation. Now is a life coach living in Ovilla, Texas. Mike Hill is a financial planner who has offices in both North Dallas as well as Midlothian. Renee, uh, let's get back to you and uh, question you and I talked about a little bit. Tell me about this Jack Canfield guy. What is he all about and how did you get hooked up with him and what do you think his real strengths are that uh, he's been able to provide you in your career? Well, Jack Canfield is the number one success coach and he's the originator of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Have you, have you heard of that? Sure, yeah. Book? Well, it started in 2010 when my wife, we got some information on Jack that he was going to be in town and we went to a one day seminar and Really just literally blew my socks off with the information he had. The book that he wrote was called The Success Principles, and, there's, and really, that can really change. I think it could change people's lives just by reading that book alone. But he studied success for 40 years. And so I went to one of his programs, two of his programs, and two seven-day courses called Breakthrough to Success. And at that time, I met a lot of like-minded people wanting to make change in their life or change in the world, and several of the people that I've went there that I sat by are just doing some huge, huge change across the world with their with their businesses and just creating new new ways of life. And so seeing that, I was able to monopolize on, on have, creating a, a mastermind group through what Jack's uh, recommendation is, finding people that you can call every two weeks and create a mastermind group. We can talk about that later. But, you know, Jack just brings a lot of authenticity to the to, to training field mm-hmm. and he really cares a lot about just people being success, successful and creating the life, the life they want. I know that I say that over and over, sure. but that's one of the things that's kind of his mantra is if you can create the life that you want, you just have to have the tools and discover the self-limiting beliefs that you have and go through all these different processes and not believe yourself is telling you that I can't do this. That word I can't is huge. Since Mike was late getting in here because he was out drinking water, we're not going to let him have his little two-minute segment here. I'm going to tell our listeners, one of the things we're going to try and do over the next um, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks here as we get deeper into some of these topics is to discuss specific things and build a foundation for you as listeners out there on how to be successful in all areas of your life. We're not going to just focus on finance. We're not going to focus necessarily on religion, politics. We're going to try and take a very holistic approach. And part of that is a very basic concept that we alluded to a little bit earlier, and that is taking 100% responsibility for the actions in your lives. Other things we might get into are determining our core values and how we set those core values and how they come about, finding our purpose in life and what's really involved there in day-to-day life uh, and activities, building a mission and vision statement. You know, this is one of those things that I laugh about because a year and a half ago when I thought about leaving my job and going out and buying a radio station, the first thing my wife sat me down and said is, so how does this change our family vision? And I said, well, probably pretty dynamically. So we uh, did a lot of soul searching on that regard. And then a, a great concept here, and I can't wait to actually dedicate an entire show to this concept, but it is belief it is possible. In other words, if you have the belief out there, then you can turn that dream into reality and you can make it a, a life changer. And then ultimately setting goals and power and, uh, and the power of goal setting and how all of that kind of plays out. So that kind of gives you a preview of where we're going to go over the next uh, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine weeks here. We will always take your phone calls, 972-923-1390. Feel free to bring up any and all topics. We will put you on the air if you like. If you do not, we can uh, do that anonymously. Is that a word? Or yeah. an- anonymity is what I was going to say. But I'm, not I'm just to- waiting for my two minutes. To You'll be get your two minutes in a second. I'm notorious for make- creating words here over the air a lot of times. So when that happens, uh, I get called out on the, uh, the carpet a lot. Um, and then, again, listeners, you can, during the week, send us emails at info at kbec.com. This is your segue, Michael. This week, we posted a poll on uh, our webpage, and it was amazing. We got, uh, I think, 27, 29 people that were kind enough to give us the uh, the click deal. I was pretty taken aback at how many you were getting so quick on there. That was Taxes was important. Obviously, we're in tax season right now. Inflation was important. I think the number one thing that came back, though, in the whole process of, you know, what do you want to hear us talk about, if I recall right, um, was this whole concept of 
how money matters in our lives, how it, how it becomes a focal point of our lives. So with that segue, I'm going to put you on the hot seat and tell me uh, how you're going to address that over the next couple of weeks. Well, the, the, the first thing, uh, those that answered the poll, uh, I would definitely encourage you to call in because taxes is so broad. What are we talking about here? Are we talking about capital gains taxes? Are we talking about we want to lower taxes, obviously? But what's your biggest, for lack of a better word, fear or uh, your biggest hurdle that you feel it's going to be when it comes to your finances? I, 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 would, I would much more welcome more specific questions. Uh, what about inflation is bothering? Well, okay, Mike, obviously my dollar is not going to be worth as much next year as it is right now, given what's going on in government and $15 trillion in debt, et cetera, et cetera. But how does that affect you here in Ellis County? How does that affect your lifestyle? That's the answers I want to give people on a more direct. That's the reason for the show. And, and what mat money means to you, maybe that's something we need to change before we even talk about what kind of investments or what kind of accounts that you set up. Because if money to you is if you're waiting till Friday at 3.30 to rush down there and pay your mortgage that's 10 days late, we have got to make some changes within your life and that's where renee comes in but we've got to make some changes with your finances as well very good point excellent point renee uh you and i kind of went over this outline taking into account of responsibility determining core values going through the whole process of you know what what life is about um we talked about where we start the process and i think that's important to, to reiterate to our listeners here a little bit as we kind of wrap this first segment up um, what can they do between now and next week's show if you were going to ask them to, to begin to start the process? Well, I would recommend take 100% responsibility for your life. But uh, that's, that's part about where Mike was talking about. If you don't have enough money to pay your mortgage, you just really start drilling back in and finding out what, what's keeping you from doing that as far as expenditures. Now, from between now and the next show, I would recommend to go out and find some books. I would, success, I would suggest the success principles. Or any kind of positive reading that they can get their hands on and make a commitment to start reading, whether it's about changing their lifestyle and even on books on finances. I mean, there's, some, there's lots of information out there where they can start helping themselves, too. But we want to be able to give, provide them some different tools, too, as we're talking during our hour shows to help them out. So I would recommend that. In other words, start the process by getting better educated. Exactly, and taking actions is sure. the key. Exactly. Rich Michael, Rich let me Dan guess you're going to... That's a good book. I will say that. But... Well, let oh. me guess you're going to tell me to go look through my checkbook, put my budget together, oh. put it all into a category. Well... You're the boring guy. I... <laughs> my, my wife says that all the time. I try to get her in, involved. You know what a budget... You know, we kid, but you know what a budget does more than just pointing out what you spend? And I know somebody out there driving... Uh, around or sitting there listening, wherever they may be to the show right now, this has to affect at least one of them because I know I, I see it all the time. What a budget does is it gets you to communicate with your spouse. You may have the best marriage, as you want to call it, known to man. You're the envy of all your friends. But you may have one partner who's a spender and the other one's a saver. Mm. Well, how do we negotiate that? A lot, like in my own marriage, just not to get too personal. I'm the guy, of course, obvious reasons. I'm the one with the NBA and finance. The wife says, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. You know, I'm sure as heck. So I'm the one that does the bills, negotiates on the mortgage, et cetera, et cetera. But I try to bring her in there to listen to these things. She goes, I know I need to know this. I go, honey, I may not always be here. Sure. You, you know, and that's something that when we do a budget, it's not just, okay, I want to save $200 on, on, on this. It's. I really want these partners to communicate, and we need to figure out what's most important to you. Is it having a tax-free retirement? Is it putting your kids through college? Is it, uh, you know, giving your daughter the wedding of her dreams? What are those goals that Renee is sitting there talking about? My emphasis on the show is to help you finance those goals. Well, and I think so many times that whole family dynamic is kind of interesting on how that works, too. And I know in my own personal family, I've got a daughter 25 years old who if I gave her $100 today, she'd spend 107 bucks. If I give my, my son 100 bucks, my son finds a way to make it into $107 and lend it to my daughter. So, I mean, he's the, he's the antithesis of, of her. He literally will save every dollar he's ever gotten. She will spend every dollar she's gotten. And her mother and I are constantly playing this battle in between saying, okay, you know, we've got to set a budget for him. In my son's case, we've got to explain to him that, you know, it's all right occasionally to buy things like shampoo, son, because there's this hygiene issue out there. 
on our daughter's side of it, it's, you know, it's all right to save $4 because, you know, you may need to find another pair of shoes or another pair of XYZs that, uh, that she needs. So I think you bring up a very good point, Mike. And I know Renee and I kind of hit on this earlier, too. There's strong personalities and there's weak personalities within a family structure. Sure. And it's bringing those together and creating those compromises and creating those um, abilities to work together that, that really is going to make this a stronger and, uh, and greater association. Ray and Nate, what do you... Um, well, I, I like to touch back on what Mike was talking about because I think people may have a negative thought when you say the word budget. You write the word budget on a piece of paper and you start writing down these emotions. Hey, I'm the one telling people to do it, and I didn't I like doing it, so I, I did that, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you start writing, you start thinking about all these negative things of like it's a, like a big stop sign in front of you. You can't spend any more money or you can't go to, to uh, Starbucks and buy that coffee anymore, you know. But, you know, it, I want the listeners to think about that because when you do write, if you do think about budgets, not this huge wall that you have to overcome, right? Don't you think, Mike? Uh, just, you just got to start planning out for it. It's... There's little things. Okay, Mike, why am I doing a budget? Okay, sure. it's not just the communication. It's not just to try to find out uh, what kind of things that we have here. But it's also, when I do a budget together, one thing that I look at is, okay, I don't see anything on here for a life insurance premium, for example. I'm not saying that. I'm not the big insurance guy. That's not my job. But I'll look at that, and I can't tell you, in 15 years of doing this, how many times I've had people come into my office where the husband has passed away or there was an accident or death and there's no life insurance policy. Or if sure. it was, it was 50000 He thought maybe that was something that he did through work and would take care of the family. The wife never knew. You know why? Because they never talked about it. Yeah. That's where the yeah. budget process comes yeah. in place. Well, and that's, just find that's the goal setting. That's the communication. And, uh, you know, I think those are very critical. And we'll get into those over the next couple of weeks, the whole idea of what are you going to communicate with each other and how are you going to make sure that that communication has you both on the same page, you know, and moving in the same direction. So Agreed. good deal, guys. Anything else you want to add here? we got about a minute and a half to wrap her up. Well, I, I would say think of some specific questions that you would have for us next week. I'd love to talk to some of your listeners and just kind of see what's going on. I know with the poll answers, we've got a lot of people out there thinking about some very big things in our government and our world today that I would like to touch on. Sure. Info, I'm sorry, Renee. No, Info.com for those out there uh, who want to uh, so much as use the email. Info at KBEC.com for uh, those questions or any time during the show between uh, 2 o'clock and 2.55. We will take your calls at 972-923-1390. We also have the Metro Lines, as most of you know, 972-938-1390. And we'll be more than happy to uh, get that input. Renee, anything to wrap up? You know, I think just piggyback on Mike, I think I'd like to encourage the the listeners to call in and and to email us on some of those things. It's some of the challenges that they're having for sure and that we can answer in the next couple of weeks because we would love to be able to to help a lot of people out in the community. Good deal. Hey, appreciate both of you guys being here today. I got to play Mike's little, uh, what is this, legalese deal here. They call the disclaimer. Exactly. You've been listening to Life and Money Matters with the Success Guys on 1390 KBEC. Mike Hill is a registered representative of and securities offered through Berthel Fisher and Company Financial Services, Inc., member FINRA SIPC. Hill and Associates Wealth Management Advisors is independent of BFCFS. The interpretations and organizations of these ideas are the confidential thoughts of Mike Hill and do not represent the opinions of Berthel Fisher and Company Financial Services. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Have a great afternoon, and TSN News is up next. Classic Texas.